Hello and welcome to The Journal, I'm Steve Kendall. How best to manage the use of and plan for the dispersal of our financial assets can be a challenge. What should you do? What should you avoid? Well, joining us to help us with that are Scott Homan, President of Resolute Wealth Advisor Incorporated, and from RCO Law, Attorney Sarah Corney. So welcome both of you to Journal. Thank you uh, for uh, having us. Yeah, and, and thank you for being here because this is a topic that people know is important to them, but that first step or thinking about it has a tendency to make people step back and go, well, I don't know if I want to, what should I do and how should I go about it? So Sarah, let's start with you. If I don't have a will, what's the first thing I should think about doing and what's the first thing I should think about not doing? Absolutely. Uh, so, of course, I'm going to recommend that you get a lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, there mm -hmm. are other ways to sure. do a will, um, mm -hmm. but a professional is the best approach to it. Mm -hmm. A will is actually a part of a, a broader thing called an estate plan. Mm -hmm. okay. An estate plan traditionally has four documents. So in the state of Ohio, at the very least, um, my ideal person, by the time they leave my office, they'll have a last will and testament, which mm -hmm. is the document you're talking about. But mm -hmm. they'll also have health care directives, which talk ah. about who mm -hmm. would make health care decisions for you in the right. event that um, mm -hmm. you're unable to make them for yourself, as well as a financial power of attorney so that somebody could help your bill pay your bills ah. if you were ever unable. So the goal is really to make decisions on who would stand by you as your mm -hmm. life changes, as you age or go through illnesses, and you know, as, mm -hmm. as death occurs to everyone, so sure. that you would have documents ready yeah. and your family would have an easier go of it during that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we had someone on a few months ago about, as you talked about, the medical aspect, because that's something people don't like to talk about right. either. Like, they want to believe they're going to be in complete control of everything at all times. Well, and, and sometimes that is the case, sometimes not. Now, uh, Scott, you know, she mentioned estate planning, and that's yeah. a big part of this because right. we all know we should have some kind of a plan, we should do something, but again, it's that first step, kind of the unknown, like, yeah. well, how do I start? What yeah. do I do? Yeah. Uh, do I have, first of all, do I have enough assets to even bother with an estate sure. plan, that kind of thing? So yeah. talk a little about when people come to you, what do you talk with them about at first? Yeah, so from a financial planning perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. um, first of all, the type of work that mm -hmm. is done between with wills and, and power of attorney and mm -hmm. things like that are very helpful to a financial planner. Mm -hmm. um, when we get in a situation where maybe a client isn't able to make their own decisions mm -hmm. anymore, having those directives in place help us take action. Um, so that work is critical um, in working in a financial plan. And when it comes to having a financial plan or working with a financial planner, um, you know, it, it's really about trying to be proactive about where you mm -hmm. wanna go. Um, sometimes clients understand where they wanna go but they don't really know how to get there. Right. And they're looking for the advice of someone who's got the perspective, got the expertise, um, and maybe also doesn't have the emotion that sometimes mm -hmm. individuals will inflict if they're making their own decisions. Sure. Um, and oftentimes people are hesitant when they come mm -hmm. to us because they feel, and I think Sarah, you run into this too, they feel like they have to have all the answers before ah. they come to us. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you're working with good planners or good attorneys or, or good CPAs or anyone in, in the professional area, it's really about the questions they ask you. Ah, okay. They should be working to uncover mm -hmm. the areas that they've seen work well in the past. Abs yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite clients are the ones who are starting from scratch, mm -hmm. who we can just, uh, you can come in and honestly say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here for a well, but I'm not sure what that means ah, to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. And it's my job to explain what that is and what it means to you specifically as I get to know you and your family and your needs. Yeah. Yep. And I guess the case where you don't have to undo and, and unlearn something, people, if you can get them at the, at the start, right. they can do it right from the, from the get-go, not, oh, well, we've got to do something, we've got to roll this back or do this or change something here that makes it more complicated. Yeah, Absolutely. and I think, it's, yeah. I think it's common, at least on, in our profession, that we tend to meet people after they've already done mm -hmm. a lot of things in their past already mm -hmm. um, because maybe the idea of really pulling it together comprehensively doesn't kick in for them until there's a big life event or they start to see retirement on the horizon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not uncommon to have to undo things, but it it's mm -hmm. it's easy to do. I mean, yeah. it, it, okay. it's just because someone's done something in the past mm -hmm. doesn't mean they can't change direction if they need to. Right, right. I, sure, mm -hmm. I have a lot of clients who walk in the door saying, you know, when my kids were young, we 
went and did a will because I was concerned about who would take care of them if I was never around to do it. But now they're entering into a new phase of life where uh, maybe like you, there's an adult mm -hmm. child in, yeah. the, mm -hmm. in the family now that maybe could step into those roles and it's time to adjust it. So the conversation that they had 20 or 30 years before is gonna look a lot different sure. because the type of people and roles and needs that your family have have changed very much. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with coming in and saying, mm -hmm. you know, I had that will. Um, uh, people often make the joke of, you know, my adult child is still going to Aunt Cindy uh, yeah. <laughs> be, because, you know, that that's what we yeah. went and took care of. So, well, and, and I guess you probably do think, well, I've got a will, I'm done with that, don't have to think about it ever again. And the reality is, no, you really should look at it almost annually or something, just like, yes. just like with, as you say, financial, financial plan. planning. Right. That's not like you do it once and you're done for the rest of your life. There's, for most, there's, that's it's not all the evolution case. takes place. That's right. Um, you know, and, and for, for many, we, we recommend someone who's working with a financial planner, you really should sit down at least once a year mm -hmm. um, to assess, because it's not about the goals not just about the goals you made when you initially made mm -hmm. the plan, but are you making progress towards those goals? Uh, the mm -hmm. tools that were implemented, are they helping you get there? Has something changed in the world? Have tax mm -hmm. laws changed? Um, and so we, we like to view those as regular progress meetings because if we're gonna have a goal, we need to check in to see if we're making progress mm -hmm. towards those goals. And we also learn a lot about what's changed in a client's life during that time sure, frame. Sure. Um, for example, if a client had the goal of um, paying for their grandchildren's college education, well, maybe they had one or two new grandchildren in the last year. Ah. That changes a perspective, mm -hmm. you know. Right, so, right. Yeah, yeah and, and I guess the other thing, too, is people need to know when they come in to talk to either one of you, what questions, if I come in and say, look, I know I need to, well, should I have a list of questions like to ask you about what I should do, or do you, is that, is that a good thing for me to say, well, I've got a list of questions, I want to find out about you and how you're going to do my will, or is it more, more of an interaction kind of a thing? I, I'm happy to answer all those okay. questions. All right. Every now and then mm -hmm. I have people who come in with the checklist at any mm -hmm. yep. phase okay. of the estate yeah. planning process, and I'm yeah. happy to answer mm -hmm. every question sure. on those lists to the best of my ability. Uh, but more often, I tell people what they need to bring is basic information about their family, mm -hmm. right? So some yeah. phone numbers and addresses of people they might trust that we want, might want to put into these documents as decision makers during yeah. life and after death for them, and some basic information about their financial plan. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, what Scott yeah. and I do work hand in hand uh, often. So. Now, for example, if somebody comes to my office and does a will, that's not the end of the story uh, right. because uh, modern mm. estate planning looks a lot different than you might sometimes see on TV where sure. <laughs> I, I did a will and now magically the people I put in the will receive everything. Mm -hmm. Modern right. estate planning looks more like uh, a person passes away and there's two categories of assets. Okay. There's one that falls under the will that'll go through the probate court, mm -hmm. your executor will be in charge, and it'll be organized that way. But more and more, a lot of our assets are over here, especially if you've worked with somebody like Scott, mm -hmm. who has maybe set up retirement accounts and investment mm -hmm. accounts. Those can have beneficiary designations. Sure, right. And mm -hmm. for families where they, their children are adults or their beneficiaries are adults and they're competent and capable of handling those funds, maybe it's appropriate to list those people as direct beneficiaries, mm -hmm. in which case if you haven't updated those beneficiaries in 20 years, even though we mm -hmm. just did a will for you. Right. You yes. know, if it has somebody who's since passed away mm -hmm. or who's no longer a part of your life listed as beneficiaries, it doesn't matter what I did over here. Yeah, okay. now we're, I'm gonna have to go to a break. Scott, we'll come back, we'll pick okay. it up with you. Back in just a moment with uh, Sarah Corney, attorney at law from RCO Law, and Scott Holman, the president of Investment Resolute Wealth Advisor Incorporated. So back in just a moment here on The Journal. Thank you for staying with us here on The Journal. We're talking about financial matters and, and putting together a proper will because it is something people, everybody needs to think about. Sometimes we don't want to think about it, but it's something you really should do. And we're joined by Sarah J. Corney, an attorney at law at RCO Law, and Scott Homan, who is the president of a Resolute Wealth Advisor and an investment advisor representative. Yeah. Uh, when we left that last segment, Scott, I know you wanted to jump in and talk about something that Sarah talked about. So yeah. pick it up right there yeah. and, and, and mention in, in relation to what she was discussing. So we were talking about um, what types of things should someone be prepared to bring. Mm -hmm. uh, from a financial planning perspective, we feel that in order for us to do our best work, we need to understand as much as we can about that mm -hmm. individual. And so we do ask for 
you know, maybe high level versions of their legal documents, uh, tax returns, statements on anything that they've got, because if they're gonna work with an advisor to help them reach their goals, mm -hmm. we need to understand as much as we can to help them get there. And it goes beyond just asking financial questions too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my favorite questions to ask, uh, the first question I typically ask new potential clients is, money means different things to different people. What is it about money that's important to you? Ah, okay. And, and we get great answers. I was gonna say, what kind of responses do you get? That's, um, that's we'll often hear security. Mm -hmm. okay. um, maybe there are things I wanna be able to do for the community at large. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna be able to support my children uh, when they have need. We wanna leave something behind for them. Or we don't wanna leave something behind mm -hmm. for our children. We wanna spend everything we've got. <laughs> Those themes become very important in how we implement plans and I you know so one of the things that we've learned over time and I think many financial advisors do is that someone's money goes where their heart is oh. and if we can understand that then we can use the money as a tool mm -hmm. to help them get where they want to having all the the legal work done helps us figure out on those accounts what's the best way to put a de beneficiary designation so that we don't undo the work oh. that an mm -hmm. attorney's done I think you've probably run into situations like that where you put uh, some great legal work in place and then somebody names a beneficiary wrong and it runs something through probate that wasn't intended to run through probate. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. or somebody fails to, to follow up with those piece. I can draft the best documents yeah. and I can mm -hmm. send my clients out in the world to uh, tell them they need to stop by the bank and make something payable on death mm -hmm. uh, to right. their child or uh, make a change like that, um, but it's up to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I find it's my favorite clients work with financial advisors as well because I can say, yeah. hey, Scott, yes. you know, we just made a major change. Maybe mm -hmm. previously what? we had done what's called a simple will, which just mm -hmm. says, you know, everything to these people. And maybe we've moved on to a trust because maybe there are young children inheriting. Mm -hmm. So we need to control their inheritance a little bit more uh, because yep. under Ohio law, uh, children can't receive more than $25,000 in an inheritance well, without court involvement. Oh, okay. uh, so at that mm -hmm. point, we're going to recommend that a trust is involved. Mm -hmm. So okay, I yeah. can send them back to someone like Scott and say, well, in order for that retirement account or those invested assets to end up in the trust for the benefit of the child, here's the steps to take. And right. he can walk the clients through that next right. step. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, that, and working with other professionals is, mm -hmm. is um, I think, having Having advisors, attorneys, CPAs that are that are working with your other trusted advisors is very important because it is easy to walk out of the office, maybe feel a little bit overwhelmed about all the information sure. you just took in, and get pulled in another direction as soon as you yeah. head out the door and, and get overwhelmed about again. And get yeah. overwhelmed again, yeah. absolutely. Now, Sarah, real quick, and I know you touched on this earlier. Something as simple as I need an. Ex you're talking about a will. What do I think about when I'm trying to figure out who the executor should be? What are some of the, I know that everybody's different yeah. and you can't, one size doesn't fit all. What are some of the things that people should consider when they said, here's the person I want to execute this document when I'm not here anymore? Absolutely. The most important piece is that you trust them. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that means a family member. Sometimes mm -hmm. um, you have adult children and they've grown up to be people who share your values mm -hmm. and who understand what your wants and needs are and your own views of what money means to mm -hmm. them so that uh, managing um, your assets during life and after death is really obvious. For a lot of other people, though, it's not nearly as obvious that. Uh. So the first step is trust. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But in a situation where you don't have that person that you obviously trust, um, there are also uh, financial advisors, attorneys, financial institutions that can step into those roles. Mm -hmm. So there is a safeguard for people mm -hmm. who don't have a person that they can look to. There are kind of institutional and professionals that mm -hmm. can fill that role when necessary. Yeah, and, uh, and attorneys can do that as well because sometimes they're executors of someone's estate because of the, for the situations you described. Absolutely, yeah. I see myself as uh, the mm -hmm. decision maker of last resort. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I'm. My conversation with you is going to be mm -hmm. yeah. who out there. You know, maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe mm -hmm. it's. Um, 
somebody from your religious organizations or community mm -hmm. organizations yeah. that you're involved in. A former employee mm -hmm. uh, might be a mm -hmm. person that you could look to to serve in those roles if yeah. there aren't you know adult children that yeah. are able to handle that. Right. Uh, yeah. Other important things to mm -hmm. consider, um, a lot of people question geography. So, oh, right, okay. is it sure, is right. it important that I choose mm -hmm. the child that lives down the street from mm -hmm. me yeah. versus the one who lives in California? Right. And the, the short answer to that in a modern age is no. Mm -hmm. yeah. It yeah. doesn't yeah. necessarily. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and you raise a good point, Scott. Uh, you know, you, obviously now we have people that have multiple homes. They go, you know, right. well, obviously Ohio people go to Florida, Arizona, yep. wherever. So they have assets down there. They have assets up here. They might have assets in Canada where they go in the, yes, in the absolutely. summertime. Um, and again, all different sorts of sets of laws and rules yeah. and things. So how do you manage that when, you, uh, when you're when you dealing with, with something like that where people have multiple assets, multiple states, multiple rules to follow? Yeah. Um, well, that really does get more into the legal side. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Okay. As an advisor, uh, we can be licensed in mm -hmm. different states well, sure. and it doesn't change the advice that we okay. need to give. Mm -hmm. So when we recognize, uh, but those are good questions mm -hmm. to ask, to understand you have a property in another state, to think about, have you talked with your attorney about, about what's gonna happen to this when you're mm -hmm. gone and how those laws are different than the mm -hmm. state of Ohio? And most yeah. often it is real estate. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, for this reason, no birds in particular, I'm licensed sure. in the state of Florida. I sat ah. through a separate bar Mm -hmm. bar exam in order to get that licensure yeah. uh, with the idea that people will often own homes in two places. Right. Sometimes, you know, it's a simple uh, mobile home on a lot near the ocean. Other mm -hmm. times um, they're, you know, extraordinarily elaborate houses. But from a legal perspective, it looks a lot like the same thing for me. Oh, uh, yeah. How do I either get it into a trust or get it to transfer on death automatically to who yeah. you want to own it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we come back. We'll we'll pick this up because there are obviously a few more questions. We thought this is this is a long. Yeah. We could do we could do a multiple segments on this. Uh, back in just a moment with Sarah Corney, attorney at law, and Scott Holman, president of Resolute Wealth Advisor Incorporated, here on the Journal. Thank you for staying with us here on the Journal. We're talking about your financial future and how you want to manage that future from a legal point of view. We have uh, Sarah Corney, an attorney from RCO Law here, and Scott Holman, the president of Resolute Wealth Advisor Inc. Uh, Scott, I come to you, are there questions I should have, I should expect that you are going to ask me, and also yeah. questions that I should ask you just to yeah. kind of see how comfortable I am with, with you as an advisor? So we, yes, we, we really encourage, um, if you're gonna, when you're choosing a financial advisor, it's okay to interview, mm -hmm. um, talk to multiple. Um, you're gonna be bearing your financial soul mm -hmm. to these, okay. these individuals and you need to feel that you connect with them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, certainly asking things about their credentials. What kind of designations do you have? Um, what's your area of focus? Mm -hmm. um, if you're nearing retirement and you realize that you're talking to someone who tends to work with people that are start mm -hmm. working Earlier with- in their careers. Er, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. You may not get what you're, you're looking mm -hmm. for. Right. Um, even what are your minimums? Um, so mm -hmm. with an, a financial planner, they may have asset minimums or fee minimums ah before uh, they will take on new clients. And the last thing you wanna do, and those are things, great questions to ask before you have that initial meeting. Right. You wanna gather up all your financial information and, and show up and realize you don't qualify for their services. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, and then beyond that, asking any questions you feel you need to feel comfortable about that individual and turning it into a conversation. Mm -hmm. Then I think beyond that, um, where you really will figure out if you got the right advisor for you will be based on the questions they ask you. Mm, okay. Are they seeking to understand you? I already talked about some of the emotional mm -hmm. piece of that. What's important about money to you? Um, what are your goals? Where do you want to be in five to ten years? You know, if they're going to help you plan, we need to you know understand where you're at now, where you want to be, so that we can determine if we can help you mm -hmm. fill those gaps. And, um, and continue to ask questions until you feel comfortable. And if you meet someone and you just don't seem to have good communication with mm -hmm. that individual, maybe keep that's looking. Not, that's right. Maybe that's not the right, right It's person. gotta be a good fit. Yeah, yeah, because it, it has to work both, everybody has to be comfortable with the You should be looking for a long-term relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. probably the same way with, with regard to when you deal with people on your aspect from the legal point. You want somebody, as, obviously if you're a client, you wanna feel comfortable that you're 
in sync with the attorney who's handling these things for you and laying them out to meet your goals there as well. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm the person that you tell that uh, about your illness and what that mm -hmm. might mean for your family and planning for it. I'm the person mm -hmm. that you're going to disclose that your child uh, has had criminal or right. bankruptcy issues mm -hmm. for and what that might mean for your uh. family and outlook. And uh, I'm also looking into the skill sets that your family members have and your feelings about it. People often will talk about uh, if a parent passed away or another loved one passed mm -hmm. away and how badly that went from a legal perspective or how mm -hmm. well it went and what that means means for them. So often I'm hearing that you know I no longer talk to my brother because right. things went really poorly after my parents died and, right. and we fought over money issues and inheritance mm -hmm. issues and couldn't make decisions together. Yeah, so it's yeah, it, it's it's very it's complicated. I mean, and that which is probably one of the reasons why people are sometimes reluctant to even engage in it because if they've had a less than right. a good experience, they're like, well, I don't want to go through that again. Right. Uh, and maybe the same thing if they've ever had an unfortunate experience uh, with financial investing Absolutely. or something like, well, yeah. Uh, now, I guess when you, when you look at all of this, if especially if, if we look at today. Should I and I know that we're we're in kind of an unusual Absolutely, situation. Right. Um, are people, for instance, coming and saying, "What should I do now? Things have changed radically." Does that? How do you deal with that? Because yeah. some people are, can stand pat. Other right. people may want to change, right. given what's going on in the markets and inflation and what's going to happen next. Yes. And none of us have a crystal ball. That's the, yeah. that's the trick. So, um, so I think one of the real benefits that a, a planner brings to the table is to do as much as possible to remove the emotion mm -hmm. from the decision. Right. Um, and that's where oftentimes individuals mm -hmm. will allow their emotions to take over. Um, but also it's important to stay informed of what's going on out there sure. mm -hmm. um, to assess, is this a time to adjust or not? Typical market cycles, mm -hmm. if you look back historically, the best thing you could do is to hang on to what you're doing or if you had the courage to be a buyer. Mm -hmm. Those right. run counter to what everyone wants, wants to, do to do right here. Right, right. And um, so, you know, it just, um, but that is one of the big roles mm -hmm. of an advisor. Sure. One of the roles we definitely have to fill during this time right now. Because I know you, I hear people, and you hear it anecdotally, you hear it though, people describing the fact that, well, I really thought I was going to retire in two years, but now with what's going on, I have to work two more years right, after that. Right. And that may be a correct position to take, or it may not. Because you know, I've, other, I've heard other people say, no, no, do what you were planning to do, because right. who knows two years from now, you may be in, it may yeah. be look better now than it does then. So, and you know, with, with planning yeah. software, what it really does is mm -hmm. it helps you stress test that. Ah, so okay. um, typically, if someone's made the decision to retire, We've tested it through all kinds of market scenarios, mm. yep. probably through market scenarios that are way worse than, than, than what we're going through okay. now. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we'll show this, the probabilities that they're gonna be able to achieve what they wanted to. And um, what's interesting is during times like this, you don't see that change very much. Um, mm. So that helps remove some of that emotion from mm -hmm. the decision. Because the reality is too, even if they retired at the optimal time, there's going to be a period sometime yeah, after, after they that. retire that the market's going to decline yeah. then, and then they're going to wonder if they should need to go back to work. Right. So yeah, and, yeah. it's mm -hmm. being fully prepared and, and testing through a lot of scenarios that is, that is mm -hmm. really important. Also, one other thing I wanted to add is during times like this is to assess, have your objectives changed? Mm -hmm. Financial okay. planning is a long-term game, and um, so if your goals are still the same and you've tested that you should be okay to do that, if your goals haven't changed, then you probably don't need to change ah. too much about what you're doing today. Yeah. And, and with the caveat that everybody, every circumstance, everyone's circumstances but, are but different. But you make a good point, and you've referenced that a couple of times that it's better to have somebody who isn't as emotionally involved because I know people say, "Well, I'm not looking at my 401k statement yep. this month yep. because I'm not going to like what I see," and then right. that keeps feeding that, oh, what should I, I need to do something, I need to right. do something. Right. And you want to have somebody say, no, no, just take a deep breath, step back a little bit, this, you know, 
as you said, things move in cycles. Yep, they do. Um, and, and you probably have the same thing too, when, especially when people have a change of life event. They're, mm -hmm. They really want to get something done right now because suddenly they're not prepared for that sudden change. And that's, that's difficult for people. Absolutely. So people will often come to see me, the birth of a first child mm -hmm. or a health diagnosis or preparing for retirement or um, maybe we are getting up into our 70s or mm -hmm. 80s and it's, it's time to have documents and these are sort of last minute, right. you know, before we have major changes that inhibit our capacity to mm -hmm. sign legal documents. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I know because when we had the people on to talk about, especially on preparing for the medical side of it, that the last thing you, you don't want to, and you've kind of related this too, that the last thing you want to be doing is making decisions in an right. extremely stressful, right. evolving situation. You want to have things in place before that happens and hopefully then right. make that a simpler to move through. But the last thing you want to do is trying to decide your medical situation when you're going through a medical problem. Absolutely. Because that can, can color your perspective and, and in any number of ways. And for lawyers, I'm always concerned about who's going to come along behind me if uh, some mm -hmm. family member disagrees with the documents we sure. prepared. And sure. if, if you're signing under a complicated uh, health scenario or you're under duress because you feel you only have a, a little bit sure. of time to make mm -hmm. these decisions, right. it uh, opens the doors to questions yeah. later that maybe there was yeah. uh, abuse or coercion involved in making those decisions. And, and you can simply make a mistake because you're not, you want to get, you're so stressed by the situation, you're not thinking through yeah. all of that. So we're going to have to leave it there because we, we are out of time. Uh, Sarah Corney, thank you so much. RCO Law, thanks for coming on. Thank use you for having me. Legal experience to this. And uh, Scott Homan, Resolute Wealth Advisor Incorporated, thank you for giving us that perspective on the financial side. And thank we'll you. I'm sure we'll be talking more in the future because be this is something, it isn't like a one-time deal as we've talked about. So, great. yeah, great. Thank you again Thank for coming you. along. Uh, you can check us out at WBGU.org, and of course, you can watch us each week on WBGU PBS. We will see you again next time. Good night and good luck.